I come from a family of serious eaters, and I have tried to eat up to my family's standards. My mother's fried chicken was the best thing I ever ate. If I can ever write anything that's as good as my mother's fried chicken, I'll be proud. The Way Folks Were Meant to Eat, read by the author Roy Blunt, Jr. These days, people worry so much about their hearts that they don't eat hearty. The way folks were meant to eat is the way my family ate when I was growing up in Georgia. We ate till we got tired. Then we went, whew, and leaned back and wholeheartedly expressed how much we regretted that we couldn't summon up the strength right then to eat some more. When I moved to the Northeast, I met someone who said she liked to stop eating while she was still just a little bit hungry. I was taken aback. Intellectually, I could see it was a sound and even an admirable policy. Lord knows it kept her in better shape than mine did me. I just thought it was crazy. We have only so much appetite allotted to us in our time on this earth, was my feeling, and it's a shame to waste any of it. People I grew up with wanted to get on out beyond their appetite of ways, to make sure they used all of it. They wanted to get full. They intended to get full. If a meal left them feeling just a touch short of overstuffed, they were disappointed. I knew a man once who complained about those little Spanish peanuts because they never added up to enough to give him any reason to stop eating them till they were all gone, and then he was still up to eating some more. I can't get ahead of them, he said. But eating right is not just a question of quantity. Primarily, it's quality. It's not letting any available good taste go unswallowed. The people I grew up eating with didn't just take a few of the most obvious bites out of a piece of chicken and decide abstractly, well, I have eaten this piece of chicken. They recognized that the institution of fried chicken demands a great deal of a chicken, and they felt bound to hold up their end. They ate down to the bones and pulled the bones apart and ate in between the bones and chewed on the bones themselves and the bones that weren't too splintery they gave to the dogs who were glad to have them. Unless they're overbred, dogs generally are Southern. Eating is like reading and writing. A book ought to be something that a person can read the way a person is meant to eat chicken, something with plenty of unabashed and also intimate flavor, ruddy and deep dyed flavor, flavor hard to separate from the structure, flavor that is never really exhaustible. Even the dogs don't get the last of it because they eat too fast. Getting all the good of it should be the determination of a reader as well as an eater. And a writer, as well as a cook, should be determined to get plenty of good into it. Eating also goes hand in hand, so to speak, with talking. Folks I grew up with talked while they ate about what they were eating. When several sides and generations of a family of such folks sat down together around a table with 10 or 12 generous platters of food in front of them, they sounded like this, and I said, I service, I'm in. Pitch in. I don't know where to start first. Mm -mm. Big Mama has outdone herself tonight. Well, I just hope y'all can enjoy it. I believe I could eat a horse. Would you look at them tomatoes? Ooh, don't they look good? Now, Tatum, slow down. You let that child enjoy himself. You'd think we didn't feed him at home. Well, he didn't get any snap beans. Lord, pass that child some snap beans. Lila, how about you over there? You need something more. Butter beans. Ooh, land, no, I'm working on this corn. Come on, just a dab. Well, you talked me into it. Mmm, awful early to be getting this good of corn. Eunice, would you send that okra back around? Look at me, just a putting it away. I'm eating like a field hand. A little more tea to wash it down? Mmm, mmm, these greens. Anybody want anything? I will have one more helping of that squash, if nobody minds. It's so good. Little cornbread to stop that juice. One more mouthful of ham, then I do have to stop, sure enough. Now look at all this chicken left. Have a little more there, Charles. Oh, where would he put it? And just a spoonful of that gravy to put on my peas. Charles, we didn't raise you to mix your gravy with your peas. See, you now you let that child eat the way he likes it. Mmm. 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 More rolls, anybody? I think this is all I can hold. You better eat some more of this good chicken. No, um, I gotta save room for pie. Look at that pie. Mm, what is in this pie? This pie is so good. Um, 
Mm. How do you get your crust to do like this, Big Mama? My crust won't do like this. Oh, your crust does fine. Mm, 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 mm. Ooh, well, I have eaten myself sick. Mm hmm. Wasn't that good? I don't think I could touch another bite. I'm about to pop. Mmm, yes, Lord. Them tomatoes are especially good. Got plenty more now I could slice right up. No, no, I'd die.